What's going on, everyone? Welcome. This is the Warehouse Series. I appreciate you for tuning in, guys. One of the biggest benefits for joining Discord is something like this. We got a new selector two weeks in. I believe they're struggling, all right? And we're going to go over a bunch of their pallets today, and hopefully I can help them build a better pallet. Now, I do want to say for some reason, if you are a warehouse manager or an owner of a warehouse that has selection in it, and you stumble upon my channel, I think the one thing that you guys screw up on that you should do is always have a trainer on the floor. All right, because it's a revolving door. You're always going to have these new employees. Now, there might be a certain time of the year you hire less people. Fine. Okay, so that person does something else. But as long as you're in the swing of things of hiring people week in and week out, so even if there's a week that you're not hiring somebody, this person should have a clipboard with everyone's name on that is four weeks and under, and they should be going around helping these people build a better pallet. Because when you're in your first week of training, there's so much that goes on. Sometimes you don't even hit the floor of actual selecting until day three, because you're learning equipment, you're learning safety. There's so much stuff that goes into training an employee. So by the time you actually start selecting, you have two, three days of full you know, selecting with the trainer, and then they're off on their own, and then you wonder why they're screwing up. I think you would retain a a lot more employees if you had one trainer going around and helping people, one qualified trainer, all right? Not someone that just wants to pass time. One qualified trainer walking around the floor and everybody four weeks and under that you see struggling, spend a lot of time with them and teach them what they're doing wrong because they might've forgot. There's so much stuff I spew during my training week uh, as a trainer, and I know that they probably forget 90% of it, and it's not their fault. There's just a lot to take in. It's a new job. It's excitement. So I really think you guys would benefit from having a trainer on the floor at all times, even if you do not have a brand new training. All right, so for new selectors, especially the person I made this video for today, things that I want you to keep in mind. First of all, guys, I promise you go watch my Cross and TVD, especially you because you're in the dry goods building. Uh, you know, Stop. Part two, three, and four, please go watch them. And we're going to go over that today a little bit as well. Uh, follow the block, and we're going to go over that a little bit. Always keep high corners, guys. High corners, low inside. You're going to see on these pictures that you are having many low corners. And that is definitely going to take you uh, right out of building quickly. If it don't fit, don't force it. We'll get into that. Keep liquid glass upright, all right? Do not, liquids and glasses should never be upside down. They should never be on their sides. They should always be upright. There are cases you can get away with putting upside down and on its side, like mac and cheese, something hard, noodles, pasta, stuff like that, that is really not going to uh, hurt that much. Now, once again, you're in dry goods, so point cases in. It's your best friend to point cases into the middle of the pallet that I talk about in the Cross and T video. So with all this being said, let's get on to the block. So there's some things I want you to remember. So you're in a dry goods building and some of these pictures that we're going to be looking at got the bigger cases on. So paper towels come in a five block. If you select it in a five block, leave it in a five, uh, five block. So here's our five block. If I get two cases, I'm pointing one in, I'm pointing one like this. All right, that's keeping the five block going. So even if you only have two of them, you're still keeping the block going. So two cases, I'm gonna point one here, one here. So keep that in mind. So let's get right to the six block. If you get a six block, usually cereal, sorry, a lot of your cereals come in a six block, well, leave it like this. Now you could also seven block these by putting them up on end. So if you wanna seven block it, so if you keep the cereal flat, you could uh, six block it. If you keep the cereal upright, you could seven block it like this. So, and there's also paper towels that come in a seven block. So just remember, if you look at the pallet and you see this block, you could put it like that on your pallet. You do not, don't start laying these paper towels down on their sides. Uh, guys, paper towels is another one. Do not lay on their sides. Unless you're stacking straight paper towels on top of it of the same size. Because if you lay a paper towel flat on its side and you put weight like cereal on it, it's going to crush that box. If you do put a paper towel down on side, make sure the same size paper towel is being stacked on top of it. All right, so one thing I should have added on there is strong corners, all right? You always want to focus on strong corners. Your corners are everything on your pallet. Now, this one right here, another one I want you to get, since you're only two weeks in, if your trainer told you touch once, forget what he said, okay? Because he or she was wrong. Uh, as a new selector, you should be touching cases multiple times until you learn your system, all right? You do not have a system, all right? I could tell. Now, you did a great job at tucking these in the middle here, but right here, see this here? 
If we have to force two leaders as a corner, then so be it. But this water would have been right here, all right? I would have immediately took my water and stuck it on the bottom corner. I don't care if I had this turn first. I see a big solid box like this coming. I'm sticking in here. I'm going to slide these two leaders over towards the middle, and that's going to complete my bottom corner you know, just it's going to it's going to make the pallet that much stronger. Now, you don't have a lot of weight here, but not all pallets or your orders are going to look like this. So focus on strong corners. This is not a strong corner. It's OK because we got a lot of lightweight on top of it. But I would have took this middle water, stuck it here and just pushed these two liters into the middle. So that's what I would have did here. Uh, this is actually not a bad pallet. We're hanging off a little bit. It's kind of tough sometimes whenever you get these bigger cases, but uh, as you can see what we just said with the block, we're not following the block here. Uh, so we squeeze these cases in the middle, which I understand why you did it. Uh, so maybe this case here just could have been somewhere else. Okay, so it's the other thing where I say if it don't fit, don't force it. Fingers, guys. Fingers width. If you put your finger down right here, that's all your pallet, your case should be hanging over is a finger's width. This is obviously more than a finger's width, and the reason being is it's going to get crushed on the truck. All right, and there's no point in throwing these cases if they're gonna get demolished on the truck on the way to the store. It's just irrelevant, it's a waste of your time. So we need to build these pallets properly. All right, so once again, you're two weeks in, something tells me you're struggling a little bit because all your pallets are small except for that first one we just looked at. And usually what uh, warehouses do, they will uh, assign you small orders uh, so you're not getting overwhelmed with a big order. They want you to learn the process, but they're, uh, you know, process of teaching you to learn is to give you small orders. But if you're not doing things correctly on the small orders, when you get the big orders, you're going to struggle big time and you're going to be dropping cases. So let's, I, this might be a long video, but it's for you, buddy. Uh, look, all right, so let's go right to the corner. We want high corners, low inside. Believe it or not, if you would have just took this big case right here, which is fine, they're taco shells, just don't put a lot of weight on them. If we would have swapped these two cases around, we would have had the high corner low inside, and this angel soft would have now been leaning slightly in towards this leaning corner right here. And then we won't have to worry about this ramp coming out. You never want a low corner. Always a high corner low inside. Please take the time to swap these cases around. You're going to notice the corner of your pallet is going to be that much stronger. All right, these Kool-Aid jammers, I try to keep them away from the back of the pallet. They are very weak cases. If you start putting weight on them, you are going to to get a pallet that rocks out. We want strong front, strong back. I put a video out on that as well. So these Kool-Aid jammers are probably gonna be within the cross and T, all right? They're not gonna be on my back corner. They're gonna be within the cross and T. Uh, other than that, we got ice cream cones uh, up on their end. The only thing I say with ice cream cones is, yeah, you could put this up on its end, because, or I mean sideways because there's no weight on it. But when you're doing it, make sure you're not putting no weight on top of it. So if I'm putting an ice cream cone on its side, I'm putting more ice cream cones on top of that box. I don't want nothing that's going to smash these ice cream cones. Uh, ice cream cones is one thing that is because think about it, cones on sideways and you just put a little bit of weight on, you're going to start cracking it. Uh, they're the strongest upright. The top of this box, it got the flaps. It's a stronger box than it is here. So just make sure you're not crushing them. I like the brawny pointing in on the back corner. So this is a nice strong back corner. I don't like the Kool-Aid jammers. Uh, your broths, I don't mind them there. You're keeping them together. See, we did a good job here. Kept these light cases together, kept this here, but just let's focus on that. Let's uh, get on to your next picture. All right, this one's a little blurry, but I wanted to post it up once again because I like your base, actually. I think you did a great job on your base. We got, did a good, great job here. Once again, low corner, high inside. Now, you could have a low corner as long as it's a big building surface. Your chinette was a perfect low corner to correct it. So all what it would have took is you taking your Cheez-Its and sticking it in the same direction. All right, don't force a tie-in. All right. And when you force tie-ins, it's the worst thing you could possibly done. So if we would have just took, honestly, this uh, rice cakes is actually a higher box than this. We got a high and a low. And if you take two cases that are just off and switch them around, you're going to be level. So if you would have took this uh, cheese it and stuck it right here in the middle and stuck the uh, rice cakes on the corner, I bet you would have been level. You would have been level or your corner would have been a little bit higher again. And then you could have tied in uh, the Pringles, I, I tend to keep them side by side. Uh, these pictures are in no uh, particular order. So 
Okay, so this is the same order. And this is why you can't bring your Pringles in. So my Pringles would have been in the middle with that cross and teeth that I talk about. These big cases, I like to keep them on the corners. Remember, we want to keep those big, strong cases on the corners. Your base is actually not bad at all. Uh, okay, so here's another thing. So I say high corners, low inside, but if it's a skinny high corner, these cases, I call them filler cases. I don't know if that's peanut butter or whatever it is, but anytime I get something small and slender like that, I always think within the cross and T, okay? It's a high corner and you're lucked out uh, actually lining it up with that, which wasn't bad. Me personally, I probably would have just uh, took this out right here and just swap these in, around so i would have took the peanut butter and put it next to that peanut butter and i would have took the camels and put it inside just to make it more sturdy of a palette because if this slips off the lip of the peanut butter you're going to have yourself a problem so it worked but it's something that i'm not confident in because if you like see how we got the big cases in the middle so if we start pushing stuff onto this palette and push this case into this case and this falls down it's going to cause a problem keep these like cases together all right so i would have just swapped them around you got nice big cases in the uh, back corner you did a great job there just these cases here i would have probably uh, focused on putting them here so wherever you're at in the warehouse it, even though these cases are a little bit bigger it's the smallest cases of that section of the warehouse that i keep within the cross and t all the big cases i try to focus putting them on the corners all right right here this is the epitome of my cross and t i can't stand it and i tell every single person Every single time I see someone put a case like this in this part of the palette. So this is picture, this is the cross part. These cases are your corners. These are your best friend. Every time I get a big case like this, I think back corner. So this is also walking cases. So you started here, you put this down and we got this fascination of doing this. All right, and then we leave ourselves with a small corner. Don't ever put cases like this in this part of the palette. All right, they should all be pointing towards the middle of your palette, especially in dry goods. This here, if you think about it, let's go back to the block. These come in a five block. Is this the original block? That it, No, it's not. That angel soft should either be here on the corner or back on the corner. So when you've seen that diagram of the five block, all right, it's right here. This case is not in the middle of the palette. So picture this in your mind when you're selecting those cases if they're not in one of these positions they are not in a good position so remember that whenever you're selecting all right uh, other than that small palette once again but we need to focus on building these palettes properly because eventually what's going to happen is they're just going to start giving you whatever and you're going to uh it's really going to be a problem uh, right here guys look all right so this is irrelevant these v8s right here this is a tie-in that we don't need to do all right so don't force a tie-in it's okay to have holes in the middle of our thing remember corners are our best friend this corner is hanging off like six inches and then we're off this is going to get obliterated on the truck it's going to if they don't rebuild it uh if, if if the loader catches this this should be a rebuild uh because these cases are just going to get demolished and that's all because we forced this tie in right here so if you would have just knocked this v8 out of here everything would have fit end the story all right don't don't worry about the middle of our palette all right so take this v8 out don't worry about tying these chunkies into this don't worry about that we need room to make our pet palettes nice and square it is so important to stay in the perimeter palette i uh, not bad up here i like the front of your palette it looks solid all right but these steps that you get in the back is from building out too far but not a good job here and it would all have been solved if we would have just knocked out those v8s all right we got a few more pictures and uh you know once again let's go right back to this corner if it don't fit don't force it and that's all you putting these cases in here so that's a that cat kit is a really nice big corner piece that's a really nice piece for our back corner so we don't want to move that we want to move this all right so if we would have just pulled out this right here our, our it would have fit on all right I try to keep these doors upright they do leak they have liquid in them uh, these stool cups uh, sometimes they do leak all right so uh, once again high corner or we got a low corner but we had a nice big wide low corner so take your coffee and keep going the same direction don't force a tie-in please stop doing this especially a high to a low tie-in they should all be level uh and with a pallet this small uh the fact that you're just throwing cases on here like this it tells me you're already stressing your standard time you're stressing your standard time but guess what this is week two or you're going into week three probably by now uh if you do not slow down 
and start focusing on how to build these pallets, you are never going to get it. All right. So we want to stay, just stay in the same direction. All these slippery cases, I like to leave holes in the middle of my pallet. And that's where the don't fit, don't force to come in too. So this is knowing your warehouse. I'm throwing all this stuff, but I know I'm going to start getting small. I have gaps in my pallet in the middle, but I know I have smaller cases coming up. So I'm going to wait patiently for those uh, cases to fill in those gaps. But keep the dole cups upright. We got to focus on that line on the back corner. Uh, I like the front of this pallet. Again, you did a, a, a pretty good job here. Let's look at your next picture, which I believe is the front. The reason why I posted this front right here, we want a skinny middle. All right, so this middle of your pallet, I like this tie-in right here, but these calf food, I would have turned so it was facing this way. That way, it's leaving us room. When you start putting cases this way in this part of the pallet, you force yourself to have a small corner. And if we have all big cases coming, well, you're going to have... Uh, problem you're going to start forcing cases where they don't need to be right here all right so this coffee would have been facing in these don't do this all right so whether you're better for or these shake the contents down we need these bags to fit flat all right because right now we have about a 40 q pallet now i'm imagining having a 70 q pallet i don't know what your full pallets are but imagine this being a 70 q pallet and we got these ramps like this and you're ramping to the outside of your pallet shake those contents in there and and i promise you guys everything that i'm saying once you get in the rhythm of doing it that's why it's so important to do it on your training weeks or i mean on your probation weeks but once you get in the rhythm of shaking that stuff down it's split seconds all right i know the stuff that i say and you guys see me on the videos and me selecting me shaking bags and stuff it is it's minute stuff that is helping me move faster uh, later on in my palate. But this base is what I worry about. I want it to be nice and strong. Uh, and we're just forcing too many cases in here. We need to simplify things. So let's keep our bags level. They're the most thing that you can get level is bags. So shake some contents around. Don't lift things up like this. And quit forcing so many cases in here. All right. Let's less lessen up the cases in here you're you're trying so hard to fill out every gap and that's not what we need to do we need to focus on the cross and t cases pointing in with that slender middle all right so we need to get away from forcing so many cases on this playing field right here all right so please watch my cross and t and please ask questions all right we're going to your last picture right here i hope this stuff is helping uh once again low corner high inside forcing a tie and that doesn't need to be there i like your back corner not too bad we're hanging off a little bit but not much but this right here this china anytime i get a big long case i think corner facing in towards the middle of the pallet i don't run them that way unless it's on the back of the pallet usually uh right here we're not too bad all right, so we got the tidy cats hanging off a little bit and your laundry detergents hanging off a little bit. If there was any more hanging off, then I would get away from this because this is you squeezing cases in, but this is a perfect squeeze in. Uh, garbage bags, they can go on their sides. Now you did it here. You did a great job of having a high corner low inside. Uh, yeah, so I would have just, uh, I, I would have switched this right here and had it facing inwards. Uh, this palette, can't really see too much, but not too bad but i really hope you take away what i am uh trying to explain in this video all right I'm, once again that was a lot but remember the blocks remember high corners low inside Re watch my cross and t video if you did not do that yet and, and honestly there are videos that you should be watching multiple times if you work in dry goods or uh, dairy you know perishable building because that really comes into play when you uh select in those buildings uh you know really focus on not hanging cases off keep that imaginary line if it don't fit don't force it remember to worry about your corners not your inside so much it is okay to have some gaps in this in your palate but we want our corners to have those big strong cases so keep working on that stuff and hit me back in a week or so with some new pictures and i'll throw them on a discord friday and we could talk about it a little bit more i hope this helps have a great day